Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday. It is the Earth Master out here. Uh, November 13th, 2024 is the date. 1042 a.m. California time. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.2 coming into the uh, Southern California area right about now. Let's see if that was picked up on the Seismos. Yes, it was quite nicely, actually. There on the Parkfield Station, China Lake is going to be the closest... Uh, a seismograph to that epicenter of the earthquake 3.2 let's take a look at this here on the earthquake 3d map out there around the ridgecrest area just north here ridgecrest this is another area that's been uh having a little bit of earthquake swarming out here along with uh quite a few other areas across southern california here recently we look at the last 30 days of earthquake activity here and just in this general area uh coming up on about 197 earthquakes including that 3.2 today uh, a couple different swarms here in the last 30 days around the area of Southern California. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, larger quake activity here in Southern California, uh, it's been a mixed bag of earthquakes all over the place here in terms of 2.5 and above with uh, quite a few threes and twos scattered out there. Um, let's see, did we have any fours? We had a 4.5 over here around the Death Valley area and um, another 4.2 stovepipe wells. So a couple fours here in the last 30 days. And if we were to go back the last 30, 60 days or so, we would add a bunch more fours onto the map. So we're still watching Southern California here for some further movement. It's been coming in waves. You know, we can't accurately 100% predict when a big earthquake is going to happen out here. But um, due to all the elevated um, increasing movement around the San Andreas Fault, and specifically this area of the Garlock Fault shear zone southward, it only makes sense there that, uh, you know, there still could be something uh, brewing out there. Obviously, there's a lot of strain. It's been a couple hundred years or so, over 300 years for the San Andreas Fault, the southern segment here, and a couple segments up north here that should have seen a larger earthquake by now as well. Uh, just, you know, pretty much a timer that has gone off, and, um, you know, I, I feel we don't have a whole lot of time here. Uh, left before we see something bigger happen out here that's just that's just the facts you know you cannot push off the inevitable it's going to happen uh, we live along a major plate boundary many fault systems off of that plate boundary and hundreds of years have passed since we've seen large-scale earthquake activity out here we built up los angeles we have built up all sorts of areas out here in the last you know uh, well it hasn't been it hasn't been since the big earthquakes out here um 300 years ago but you know more recently in, in our time period uh, so when the big one does strike out here it's going to come uh, to a shock to quite a few folks out there oh my gosh what's happening well you know it's always good to be prepared out there uh, and to not become a statistic is uh, make sure you're prepared and have an earthquake plan so latest quake 3.2 See if anybody felt this earthquake out here. It has been reviewed far as the uh, specific magnitudes here. Let's see what we got. Okay, they went with this one right here. Error, error, error report of 0 0.24, 22 stations. Here's one with a less error, uh, a little bit lower magnitude. Let's see what we got here. 3.4, 3.8. Yeah, so the computer will average all these magnitudes right here, including a 3.33, pretty cool, um, and put together a preliminary data uh, magnitude, location, and depth, and then from there it will be reviewed by a seismologist, which has been already. So um, that magnitude, location, and depth should stick. Depth depth be below the surface here should stick. That's actually a really shallow earthquake there, uh, just at the surface level point zero or 0 0.6 i should say so not quite a mile there uh, below the area uh, aside from that i think that's the only thing above 2.5 out here for now it's been a couple of days of quietness but uh that could change here today we'll definitely have to keep an eye on it uh san jacinto fault zone still seeing some movement out there typical activity along this um, fairly lengthy fault system here secondary of the san andreas fault some movement down here off the Imperial Fault from uh, yesterday, but uh, we'll see what happens here today. Things are starting to kick up a little bit. Uh, the rest of the country out here, fairly quiet in terms of any specific earthquake activity. Let's give a quick glance here at the Yellowstone overview. 
and see what's going on here at Yellowstone. Not a whole lot. Pretty quiet. Occasionally, we'll see a couple earthquakes pop up here uh, on the microquake department, but uh, things are pretty quiet out there. A lot of outside interference noise, whether it's wind uh, or other noise out there. But as far as earthquake activity, uh, if, if I were to spot one, it'd be this one right here. And that earthquake showed up uh, across a couple seismograph stations. But uh, looking at the magnitude there, I would say that's really nothing of any concern. A little 1.0. Uh, rest of the country pretty quiet. Uh, as far as the worldwide activity goes here in the last 24 hours, as far as the largest magnitude after midnight, it's going to be this 4.9. Here in the last 24 hours, it's going to be that 5.1 in the Afghanistan area. So... Um, not seen a whole lot of significant earthquake activity out here recently. Yeah, we've seen a lot of deeper movement here across the globe in the last 24 hours, but uh, I'm surprised we haven't seen any larger adjustment out here in the area. I was fully expecting to see something pop overnight here across the region, but uh, so far we have yet to see it. Looks like a couple more deep earthquakes there around Afghanistan. And uh, back here across the Indonesia Islands area, continuing their deep earthquake events out there. Uh, pancake event there across Japan. That's going to be this area right here. A uh, bunch of deeper quakes here underneath the area of Tokyo. That's the southern end of the Japan Trench. Uh, might want to watch that here because these deeper quakes can trigger the bigger ones upstream, right? Where the, uh, the larger quakes tend to uh, take place. More shallow, larger quakes. Uh, up into Alaska, 4.3. Let's go ahead and zoom up here real quick and see what we got for that four-pointer. Actually, USGS reporting this as a 4.5 just after 1 o'clock this morning. Uh, that earthquake was felt over there around Anchorage, uh, just about uh, oh, 60 miles or so away from the epicenter of that, uh, that earthquake early this morning, about 1 o'clock in the morning for that 4.5. Uh, let's see, Middle America Trench, some older movement there from yesterday. Really not seeing uh, a whole lot of activity in the newer scale of things for now. Puerto Rico Trench, fairly quiet as well. A little 3.3 out here across the U.S. Virgin Islands area. In the South America region here, some uh, older activity from yesterday and a little bit from today. But overall, that's a uh, just a normal pattern down there of earthquake activity on any given day, right? One would think that that's a lot of earthquake activity, right? What's happening? Well, it's a major subduction zone. Um, the Middle America Trench here and also the uh, uh, Ecuador Trench, Peru Chile Trench, fairly lengthy subduction zone. Whenever we get subduction zones around the plates, that's where all the earthquake activity is happening. If we lived along a major subduction zone here across the West Coast, oh man, <clears throat> we'd all be feeling fours and fives quite often. Um, but we don't. We live on a transform type boundary, the slippage here between the two plates, Pacific plate moving off to the Northwest in a general fashion, and uh, the North American plate here moving to the Southeast. So that's why we don't see as much earthquake activity as other regions around the plates such as the Indonesia Islands area, Japan, um, New Zealand area, Northward, Peru Chile Trench, Middle America Trench, all subdu subduction zones. But we do get earthquakes. It takes just a little bit longer time to build up strain. But I have a feeling we're getting much closer to that time period here of see seeing something bigger. All right, space weather activity out here today on the sun. Things slowing down as I forecasted there last night. We got a little bit of inflare here within the last couple of hours. I'm not for sure exactly where that came from. Um, not a big event. Let's see, that was put out yesterday. So I'm guessing it maybe came off of a, uh, a far side area on the western limb. Let's go ahead and check out that movie real quick here. Hello? Yeah, we're still live. All right. Put this into motion, and um, it's going to be towards the end here. This is the last 48 hours. This region was quite active, but it's uh, dissipated here in the last day or so. So I'm guessing this most recent flare is going to be over here. It's getting close to the end of the video. We're looking for a sharp impulse. Well, let's see here. Take it back. It almost looks like it came off of this one. 
right here, little M flare. So it looks like it had just a little bit enough juice in there uh, to produce that low grade M flare today uh, across this area. I'm guessing right about here, the sunspot area. But uh, it's not looking anything like it did here a couple days ago uh, when it was capable of producing some strong X flares. But we'll watch that maybe for some further uh, low grade M flare activity. And not a whole lot else behind that. Looks like maybe a newer sunspot popping up here. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that there in the coming days. Uh, so overall threat still remains. 25% uh, chance for X flare, 65 for the M flare. C flare around 99% chance or so. Nothing major in the Aurora forecast there for now, folks. Uh, Storm Prediction Center shows, uh, well, a little bit of slight risk category down here across Louisiana area, Mississippi as well. That's uh, due to a 5% and 2% chance for some tornado activity today, uh, along with a little bit of wind threat. Um, general thunderstorm activity around that, even out here across California, we've got a marginal risk there across the area of the coast range. That's uh, due to some wind uh, that will be kicking up out here. We got uh, we got a little bit of rain moving in here to Northern California now, just about ready to hit to the Chico area where I'm at. Um, down to Willows, a little line of activity stretching and coming in from the northwest. Really not expecting much, but hey, at this point, we'll take any precipitation Mother Nature wants to hand out because, uh, man, it's been a dry start to the winter for us. We're starting to dip back down into the drought. All right, so hurricane activity, tropical systems here. This is looking more and more um, likely that this will... This hurricane down here, soon to be hurricane, will venture over land across the Yucatan, Mexico area, much further west than what was originally forecast. I don't know why I keep clicking that. Um, otherwise, had that just stayed op over open waters, we were talking about a major hurricane hitting the Florida area. Now it looks like it's going to scoot to the west and then get caught up there with that low pressure cold front and bring a bunch of rainfall there to Florida. Uh, but we're not going to have all that extreme wind and uh, you know whatnot that would come with a very strong hurricane just a lot of moisture to deal with uh, following that unorganized tropical system down there now uh, but it's still a ways out this is for next uh middle of next week so we got about seven days here things could change but the weather models are trending towards the uh, rapid uh, deterioration of that tropical system once it heads over land and then gets pulled up to the northeast by that massive low pressure cinema center up there into the Great Lakes area. That is a huge cold system up there. Going to bring some snow and some very cold temperatures out there across the east. Uh, just going to sit up there and wrap around for a little bit. Wish we had that over across the west coast. That would be nice. Uh, a little bit of rain coming back into Northern California, hopefully, as we end out the November time period. But, man, it's been super dry out here. Um, and that's not good news. We need the rainfall out here across California. Um, looking at the, let's check out the current drought conditions out here. I know there's been a huge improvement across Oklahoma and the Midwest area. Um, there we go. That whole area is completely gone now. Um, a couple weeks back, maybe three weeks back, this was exceptional and extreme drought out here across Oklahoma and portions of the Midwest. All the recent heavy rainfall and severe weather has completely eliminated the drought conditions out there uh, for the surface area and also for the deeper areas below the surface. So uh, with a 0 to 100 cm across that area. So that's good news. Uh, the northeast could definitely use some more uh, precipitation, it looks like, dealing with some drought up there across Pennsylvania and New York. California, look, we're starting to dip back down into the drought conditions. Uh, I'm hoping we get some uh, sufficient Pacific storms out here. But uh, for the folks up here, uh, it's looking good, looking a lot better. Um Got any major wind out here? Well, if you're off the coast here of California, uh, around Eureka, Crescent City area, I got some pretty strong winds from that uh, from that low pressure system. I got to change this over to miles per hour, but that's that's fairly strong up there. Uh, anyway, all right, so let's take a look here real quick. Nothing further there on the seismos. It looks there's that first earthquake, the three pointer. 
looks like maybe there was some type of little aftershock there around the uh, Ridgecrest area following that 3.2 that struck here just a short time ago there across the area. Uh, but we'll watch it today, see what happens. It's been uh, it's been off and on here for earthquake activity, mostly microquake activity. Um, but uh, all it takes is you know some adjustment going on here on a broad scale. Uh, type of event and we'll see things get elevated again uh, across california but for now we'll, we'll just kind of see how it's going out here folks enjoy the rain if you're getting it i'm going to go step outside and uh do a little cleansing here see if i can clear my voice i mean it's getting better my voice is uh, i'm feeling fine it's just a little bit of lingering going on but it's slowly but surely going away i appreciate the positive vibes coming out here we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on folks enjoy this beautiful Wednesday. Take care.